Thank you for tuning in to checking out Vinyl Happy Hour. I have several great records we're going to be talking about and some drinking to do for episode 19. I'm Skylar from Culture Shop Clothing, Gifts, and Records here in Rockford, Illinois. Along every Thursday night, we've been doing Vinyl Happy Hour. We're talking about some new releases that are coming out tomorrow for the Friday new release. And we're uh, busting out kind of a holy grail or a rare used gem to show off to. Uh, we just kind of want to keep you more in the loop of what's going on in the new release world and the reissues. And there's so many great labels and bands putting out stuff on vinyl. It's a hot time for vinyl. Uh, but I'm going to get started first with a drink here. Uh, we recently went back to Whiskey Acres uh, Distillery and Farm right here in DeKalb, Illinois, just a little south of Rockford. And I got uh, myself all talked into this little um, specialty pack. They did uh, three different bourbons here. And what's really cool about it, though, is the reason I had to get it, this is like the Artisan series. They actually separated their corn. And you know how there's like the different colors of corn and different hybrids of corns and stuff like that. So they actually have, this one is called um, Whiskey Acres Artisan Series Bourbon Whiskey Corn Variety X67. I forgot which corn that is, but it's really cool that they were able to separate the corns instead of blending them uh, to come up with this Artisan Series of bourbon. So I was pretty geeked out about that. And I, they didn't have any there to sample or try, though, of that specific one. So, of course, I had to get the little gift set one. And um, it's always great to drink when it's nice weather, but now that it's getting colder... It's even better to drink, I think. So it seems to stick really nice to the side of the glass too. It's got a really great texture, you know, a great feel. It's actually not quite as sweet as their regular blended bourbon whiskey, uh, but the aroma and the flavor is really nice and warming. Uh, it has just enough sweetness for me. I do like things usually on the sweeter side. Uh, this is not very peppery or anything like that. Um, there's not really a lot of spice to it. So I could totally uh, just drink this nice and straight like this. It's really good. So I'm uh, really happy to get that Artisan Series. I love their regular bourbon whiskey too. Uh, everything those guys are doing on there has been really great. Uh, I'm going to bust in though uh, to start talking about some records. Uh, if this is your first time viewing, we pretty much do uh, one drink and five records every week. Uh, right now, the first one I'm going to talk about is from St. Vincent. I don't know if you know her or listened to her yet. This is Mass Education. This is her uh, newest album that came out last year. She's actually releasing like a, like an acoustic version or a reimagining of the album. Really great packaging on it too. It looks like very frosty behind a mirror and the gold lettering on here is embossed. Uh, the album is beautiful. I already love her music and all the, the guitar and stuff like that and the, with the band. But this is like very stripped down. More just bass guitar and piano on everything. Um, if you're a little older, it's definitely going to make you think about some Tori Amos and uh, Fiona Apple, of course. Or if you're even older than that or have an older taste, maybe even some Kate Bush. Uh, her vocals stand out so strong. Like I said, her vocals have always been great, but it really stands out on this album. So we're going to have to order some more copies, and I think this one's going to be going once you get a chance to listen to it. I think you're going to fall in love with her all over again. So definitely check out uh, the new St. Vincent there, Mass Education. It's called, it's the same title as the old album, but it's just the reimagined version, different artwork. So uh, now I'm going to go with something a little different. Of course, loving my 90s stuff. Boom, System of a Down, finally on vinyl. I've been seeing all over the internet and even at a few stores around the, the country, like bootlegs of this, it's never been officially released on vinyl. So I don't know what those sound like. I'm guessing they're probably very digital or thin sounding, but stoked that they have finally put all their stuff out officially on vinyl. Not just their first album. You've got Toxicity, Steal This Album, Hypnotize, Mesmerize. So cool to see all the system stuff finally getting reissued. We also just recently saw Rage Against the Machine stuff um, get reissued. So if you haven't been in to pick those up yet, we do have those. Now we've got all the system of a down. I remember seeing these guys right out of high school, like at Ozfest or something. So cool. Such a weird band. Uh, so heavy though. I mean, now I listen to a lot of heavy stuff sometimes, but this album, when it came out, I thought nothing could be heavier than this, the way they scream and the way they play. So happy. Finally, System of a Down. I think it's first time on vinyl for everything there, except for Toxicity, maybe, which even that's really rare. Uh, next release coming out tomorrow that I want to talk about is from our classic dudes in Cypress Hill. They have a new album, totally different though. It's called Elephants on Acid. Uh, Everyone probably knows Cypress Hill from Insane in the Membrane, Insane in the Brain, 
uh, hits from the bong, all the classic, you know, their kind of cool Southern California vibe, their hip hop and DJs and stuff like that. But this is still rap, don't get me wrong, but they're really getting experimental on this new album. First one they've done in many years. They actually, there's like a lot of sitar and guitar and just kind of uh, the samples and feels you would feel from like a kind of like a psychedelic rock album, actually. It's kind of weird uh, the direction they're going. I love it though. It's a double LP. Uh, I forgot to mention, even better, they did an indie store exclusive. So a lot of um, bands are putting out special releases that are on certain color vinyl or have certain posters or extras. Uh, their new album, they did Smoke Gray and Blue Vinyl. So one record is Silvery Gray, one of them is Blue. There's still tons of, um, what's their DJ's name? DJ Muggs? He's the one who produced the whole album, so it still hits really hard. It's got a lot of good bass, a lot of good um, hip-hop backing tracks and stuff like that with all the sampled stuff. Um, so it's still a good hip-hop album, but it's definitely going to be different. They're getting very experimental. It's a very long album, too. I think there's 21 tracks on it, maybe 19. So it it's goes takes you on a really big journey. Um, but it's cool. They've always admitted to being really into 70s rock, um, Latin rock, you know, psychedelic rock, all kinds of different, um, you know, meshing of music coming together. So that's the uh, new Cypress Hill, Elephants on Acid. Uh, definitely worth checking out. Uh, for old fans and for new people, even if you're not into them yet, it's a, it's a good one to get into. It's definitely got a really cool sound, really great artwork too. Uh, my next release is going to be my favorite one for the week, probably for, for the last month or two at least, maybe this year even. Uh, Uncle Acid and the Deadbeats. The, uh, this album, uh, Wasteland, we've been waiting for them to come out with something new for a while. It's been two or three years, I think. This is a band on Rise Above Records from the UK. Uh, it's their fifth album now. They're very, it's stoner rock. It's stoner, doom metal, whatever you want to call it. But it has a really cool nostalgic throwback sound. Very kind of creepy 70s rock sound. Um, they were very mysterious at first. Their first couple albums, you know, there's like posters and things that look like these really weird old horror movies. And it says, crazed freaks on drugs making satanic rock or something like that. And they were kind of uh, mysterious, you know. Nobody saw their faces or what they looked like. Um, but yeah, they're just a, a band of really awesome dudes making really good kind of classic stoner rock sounding with a newer kind of doom metal sound. Uh, it's a little bit uh, distorted sounding and kind of eerie sounding, uh, but it's really cool. They also did an indie store exclusive on the new album, which is cool. Let me get right to that. See if you can even see this though. This is like black vinyl with gold splatter and kind of uh, glitter in it. So. I guess you just have to buy your own copy, open it up, and watch it spin on your table, how trippy it looks. The other cool thing that they did with their packaging is they threw in for the Indie Store exclusive, kind of a, a vintage kind of a thing, an iron-on transfer. So you could put this on one of your shirts or iron it on of their logo. And it has a really cool inner booklet, too. Yeah? So that is my release, my pick of the week. Now, if you've been watching this before, you know I usually save a holy grail or rare one for last, and I did. But I want to know who has been watching us over the last few weeks. If you haven't been, you can go back and find our old videos on YouTube. Just find Culture Shock Clothing and Records on YouTube for Vinyl Happy Hour. If it's your first watch, please let us know. I want to know if it's your first time getting in to see a video. If you've already seen it before or if you're watching this on a repeat later, just type R for a repeat. And if you're watching live right now, just give us some comments, give us a thumbs up below. Um, let me get a drink here before I bring out the last record. Mm. Oh, I'm getting all wound up. All right, so this is the Strawberry Alarm Clock, Incense and Peppermints, already kind of a rare 60s psych rock album. That's not the version I'm gonna show you. That's the first press mono, or stereo version, I mean. I have this kind of bootleg-ish one. This is a Taiwanese press. And it's got all the Taiwanese lettering and stuff on it. You can see across the back. These are considered unofficial releases, although they sound really great. It's also on red vinyl, like see-through red vinyl. And uh, a lot of these are known to have misprints or typos and things like that on it. Um, they also printed on paper instead of like real jackets. So it's just like folded paper with plastic over it. I think a lot of these were bought by military personnel, people who were on military bases in Taiwan. This is actually pretty decent sounding though, and it even has color. I've seen a lot of these where they print them on rice paper, and it's usually just horrible quality print, real pixelated. 
but it actually has color. Like I said, it's really thin, not like a real jacket, uh, but it's a really cool find. I just thought I'd show that off. Uh, it's cool to see these different uh, albums that were printed or made overseas or in other countries. Uh, we still, there's still a lot of imports being made. Nothing quite like this, where it's really essentially a bootleg, but it's still cool to see, especially the 60 Psych piece like this on colored vinyl and with all the different printing and lettering on it. So yeah, if you've got any interesting thing like that in your collection, let us know what you've got. I'd like to uh, look a little more into it. Or if you know anything more about these Taiwanese pressings and see where were they purchased. I don't know if there were stores that were selling these or if they were just kind of sold on the side. I'm not sure, but it's, it sure is pretty interesting. I've seen a few other releases like that too. Like I said, this one looks and sounds better than most I've seen before. Uh, but yeah, that is it. Until next week, guys. Check us out every Thursday night. We're doing live Facebook and Instagram, Vinyl Happy Hour. And uh, you can go back and find our old episodes on YouTube. Uh, until then, thank you so much. Cheers. <laughs>